do a, a quick video here because I've animated these so you, you can um, stop them and rewind them as you like. I'm not going to write them out by hand. Um, I don't know if this is effective this way. Um, this is an example actually I did in class today and uh, didn't finish. Well, no, I guess I finished it, but I, I, I wanted to compare it to an FEA result and um, they didn't compare. I, I did the model really quick and I was like, well, what's going on? It's because I used, I said that it was aluminum, but then I used the properties of steel, right? So I used, this is the properties I used, the 207 um, gigapascals. Um, and I called it aluminum, it's actually steel, all right? So here's that 500 di um, uh, dimension here, and here's the 300 dimension, and I have 3.5 kilonewtons, and this is the 10 millimeter. And this thing is not drawn to scale at all, as we'll see in the solid model when we take a look here. So here is me uh, making some animations. So there's what I'm saying in the y direction, there's going to be three contributions to um, deflection. And um, they're going to be, first there's going to be the bending of AB, this guy right here, because of this force, right? This force is, you could just transfer this force over to right here at B, and that's going to cause that part to bend. Do I have my, uh, yes I do, I have my handy dandy um, representative thing. Okay, so unfortunately, um, I guess I'm backwards. Uh, let's see if I can get this thing to look uh, the right way. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Maybe it's this way. Nope, this way. All right, I'm not going to get it. So anyway, <laughs> it's this long axis bending downwards, right? So this piece is got with the little extension out here. Even though there's a force out here, it still effectively has a force here, and it bends that down. Okay, that's that first one. And the next one is going to be the bending deflection of this thing by itself, right? So it's going to bend down, right? So its base has already moved because this bent down. Now this thing is going to bend down on its own. And now the one that's like the least maybe intuitive is now this base is going to twist, right? And because it twists, that thing is going to come down. So it's got a twist to it. It's got an angular deflection and now this one comes down. And those three things together can be added together with superposition. So let's take a look at this first one, bending right here. So I made a little animation, or I made a little sketch right here. That's looking at the XZ plane, so it's kind of from that direction right there. And that's case, and ta table A9 in the book, if we were to open this up and take a look at uh, uh, case one, that's going to be this deflection right there, um, specifically with that length right here. And uh, this is how much we have in meters, right? Um, then we're also going to bending of BC. That's this length right here. That's the 300 mil uh, or an error. So now we're looking at a view that's looking down the x-axis at the yz plane, right? And you can see that this thing is bending. That too is going to be case one, but now the real difference is now this is LBC is 300 uh, millimeters or 0.3 meters right there. So up here we had 0.5, down here we have 0.3. So we're going to have less of a deflection. And now the last one's going to be the twist, right? So you can kind of see this is the same view, but now this guy has twisted. That's the long piece that piece AB has twisted an angle and that's going to, first of all it's going to twist due to a torque so it's going to be that force <clears throat> in the y direction here times that length BC that could that's the torque that's being applied onto the long part of this thing so it's 1.05 Newton meters and we have that um, theta is equal TL over JG and the L though is the length AB because this is the guy that's twisting so now we have this in radians, and now we're going to multiply the length of this times that theta. Um, so it's the length of BC that we use, and we'll find this amount of deflection. So the total deflection is adding all three of those contributions up together, and what we end up is 3.768 millimeters. Now the impressive thing, 3.77 millimeters, is to do an FEA on this and to see how close we get. And this is showing this is a SOLIDWORKS simulation 
and I'm using solid elements, although it look, they might look like beam elements to someone. They are solid elements. And the mesh is not that really severe. There's going to be an error because I put in a radius right here. This is it has like a, a little turn right there. That could be a source of error. But look at this, 3.655 millimeters compared to 3.77. That's only a difference of 0.3%. That's pretty good. Now here's another example, and if you've come this far, why not come for the? It's very similar up to a point. Notice that um, there's uh, now the force is going also in the x direction as well as the y direction, right? And now it's in U.S. units, so there's another difference there. I think it's going to be when we look at it from the top and we see what happens in the x direction that we're really going to see something, uh, maybe a little bit, a little more of a variation on what we had before. So this is really very similar to the other problem. Let's see, it's not, there you go. Uh, so I divided that uh, um, 15 pounds into a Y and X. So let's start out with the contributions in the Y direction. So very much similar. We're gonna have a bending of OA. Yep, that's true. We're gonna have a bending of AB, gotcha. And then we're gonna have a torsion that's gonna cause a twist, right? So we had really all the same ingredients that we had before, right? So here's the one that's bending of that piece OA. Um, here's the bending of this piece AB right there, gotcha. And it's this amount right there. And once again, these are both A9 case one. And then they have the twist, right? And that's gonna cause an, a, a torque of 84. Is this the 12 times the seven, right? So the, the, the 12 down times the seven has that torque. And we're gonna need this in radians. And then we multiply that angle times this length and we go down that amount. We add up all these deflections in the y direction and we get this uh, uh, total uh, displacement of 0.2866. Now we want to do it in the um, x direction. So let's take a look. There's three contributions. Now this is a little different. It's going to deform this way, right? So we're going to pull on this and it's going to get longer. It's not going to deflect a lot, but it is this uh, piece AO is going to uh, stretch a little bit. Um, it's going to bend um, this way right here, right? So it's going to, this is going to bend that way. So it's going to bend just this local piece. And now here's the weird one. By putting a force here, we're actually kind of putting a moment onto here and that's going to bend this guy down, right? So think about it. We have a force right here pushing and it's going to cause a bending moment and that bending moment is going to cause this. So well, there's actually a case for a cantilever beam with a moment on the end, and that's the one that we're going to use. So here's the axial deformation, and you get the little pictogram, uh, shows what it's supposed to be, but th that's just the FL over AE, right? That's, that's a, a simple one, that's like the first deflection that we looked. We said this E to the minus five, that's pretty small. Um, and then next, we're going to have a bending um, AB, uh, so that's just going to be this guy right here. So we're just bending this end. So that's still that A9 case one. And well, it's about one tenth of one one hundredth of an inch, yeah, one one hundredth of an inch, right? Uh, now this next one, now there's we're, there's going to be a slope to um, this piece OA, right? So you're going to see that this thing is going to because it has a moment on the end, that's really the effective moment. That's because of this force, this force in the x direction times that seven is going to. Uh, cause a moment that's going to twist around here and it's going to bend this up and it's going to have a slope. Now that slope angle is going to be the same angle as this guy right here. So we're going to take that angle and we're going to multiply him by this length and that's going to give us that distance right there. So here's the moment, 63 inch pounds. And here's this A9, this is case four, like you can look this up in Shigley and this is the uh, uh, thing that we had in there, but we want the slope. So we need to take the derivative of this with respect to x, and you can see that that two is gonna go away because of that x squared. So we're gonna have this for the theta. Just that moment that we just found times the length OA, right, this long guy, divided by EI. So that's the number of radians. And now we're gonna multiply that angle Right here, because that angle, this angle here at the end is the same thing that's that you know. Let me, let me put it this way. Let me see if I can show this. Right, it's going to have a slope to it, like this down downwards. Right here's horizontal, and here's the slope. And this thing 
is going to move the same amount. It's going to have that same angle in between. So now we can see that angle times this length is going to give us the x displacement. All right, so we have 0 0.07, which is actually the most of these three x things. So we add them all together, and you got 0 0.083. All right, so here's the, um, so you see there's a lot more in the y direction than there is in the x. But let's compare it now to an FEA result. So I'm doing them individually, so in the y direction, 0.287. And our FEA, look at that, look how close we got, 0. 2799. That's pretty good. That's a 0.234% difference. Pretty nice. Um, and then here you go. Here is, uh, I gotta remember, let's see, I'm trying to go back, but it's like taking its time. There you go. 0 0.0831 was what we had in the x direction. So look at this. This is 0 0.08324. Pretty nice, huh? We got a 0.025% difference. Yeah. Um, what you could come away with is that we could get really close uh, between the uh, hand calculation and the uh, computer simulation uh, between these two. And I think that uh, kind of is, is a nice validation of both methods. Uh, that they have agreement. Of course, they could equally be wrong. There's a lot of things that are different between what reality would be. It'd be kind of interesting uh, to see what the de deformation would be in, in a real thing to uh, apply this. Um, by the way, this original problem here was out of Shigley and was meant to be done with a technique ca called Castigliano, which I'm not covering this semester, but it's an energy-based method. And um, so I could actually look it up. Let me see what the, uh, what the book says that the X and the Y, assuming that I did it, um, that they were looking for the same thing. So one second, let me get the uh, solution manual. Okay, so um, one of the aspects of this problem is they're actually looking for the, f uh, Castigliano will give you the deflection in the direction of the force, right? So the force is coming down at a particular angle. And it's not necessarily going to deform exactly in that, but it's going to be close enough. But it's going to be a diagonal difference, uh, distance that they're going to get here. They're not breaking it down into x's and y's. Um, but when they're done with the thing, okay, so here, oh, here you go. They did it in x. So they have x, y, and z. All right, so it's interesting. Um, we don't have z, but we do have x and y. So our x was 831. Their x was 831 from Castigliano. So let's see, let's go back to ours. And um, let me hear, let me just hit escape out of the thing. And let's just take a look. So uh, this one we said, we have 287 and they have uh, 286. Yes, we got very close to Castigliano with uh, just using superposition. And um, let me come back to here. We had 0 0.831, and there's no fudging going on here. 0 0.831 got the exact same thing that they had from uh, Castigliano. So I think we're successful. Um, but I think this, maybe more than Castigliano. Castigliano, I, I didn't explain what it was quite in class, but it's by taking the partial derivative of the strain energy, you're able to uh, get def deflections. Um, but here we're able to do it um, just by systematically breaking things apart. And not only that, we in ours, we get to see where the contributions are coming from. I guess you could also say you could do that in Castigliano, but that's enough. Um, so I think a homework assignment will be kind of similar to one of these or two of these, you know, to, to uh, for, for you to also compare uh, to a finite element analysis um, displacement.